Ladies and gentlemen, today we are talking with Mike Kim. Uh, Mike is the head of Asia Pacific at Orbital Insight. Mike, welcome to the program. How are you? Good. Doing good. Thanks, John, for having me. It's great to be here. Excellent. Now, Mike, perhaps you could start off by telling the people watching this a little bit about Orbital Insight. Who are they and what do they do? Orbital Insight is a uh, Palo Alto, California headquartered AI geospatial analytics software company. So a lot of pieces there. We focus on the AI piece. Uh, so we're creating algorithms uh, using machine learning. Uh, we use geospatial data, which is anything with a latitude longitude that we think is of help to our customers, which are businesses, governments, organizations. So an example would be satellite imagery for example, mobile location data. These are powerful data sources that, that are helpful for business or decision-making insights. And then we package that all into uh, a software platform we called Go to make it easy for uh, end user to log in, to run a project and get insights. So in short, uh, you know, our investors are Sequoia and Google Ventures. Uh, of course, everyone knows Google and, and we say, um, uh, we're trying to, uh, we want to be the Google search of geospatial data so you can very quickly get geospatial insights. Now, I imagine on a national level, from a national security point of view, the concept of geospatial data and geospatial information is relatively easy to get our head around. So we'll come back to that in a minute. But if we'll sort of start by drilling down into more sort of local centric projects and products and the sorts of things that you can do. If if we wanted to relate that to the average corporate security manager who doesn't necessarily want to count troop movements moving into and out of a country, but wants to maybe look at movements into and out of an event or an area or a location, how deeply can you drill down and refine those capabilities? Yeah, so what we're finding is that on the um, government side, we're mostly using satellite imagery, AI-based satellite imagery analytics, quantifying that imagery, scaling it, um, um, scaling those insights. On the commercial side, the private sector side, we're finding um, mobile location data is really the powerful data source. So one of the examples is supply chain intelligence uh, is, is a key uh, solution that we offer. Uh, Unilever, the largest food company in the world, famous for brands like Dove and Ben and & Jerry's ice cream. Uh, they're quite public about using our solution to map out their supply chain and also track a very important topic for them, for uh, uh, which is deforestation. So on their website, if you go to unilever.com, they have uh, our data on there showing how they're using us to map out uh, supply chain activity. So, uh, you know, I think that would be the application, which is looking using mobile, um, you know, your your mobile uh, device data and as a proxy to understand human activity. Um, that's that would be the application. Uh, one example I could give is uh, Nikkei. Uh, th there's many media outlets using our our um, platform in our data. Um, Nikkei is a subscriber to uh, our Go platform, and they produce articles using uh, the the software. So one example is after the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the next day they published an article with insights as to how the population was moving using uh, mobile location data. So to come back to the piece that you were talking about with using geospatial location data to map supply chains, obviously we don't want to get into the weeds of the IP around this sort of stuff, but can you help me understand how exactly that works? Because that's something that I imagine supply chain, uh, you know, data and understanding supply chain movements and all the rest of it would be very important to a lot of security managers. How does the geospatial part and the AI fit into that? Sure. So um, the the AI is well. One example I could give is the mobile location data. We we use um, we partner with several companies across the whole geospatial data supply chain or um, that that network of. Some 
suppliers of data. There's uh, several satellite imagery companies. There's several mobile location data aggregators. Then we've got AIS shipping data, uh, connected vehicle data is coming as well. So we do the job of aggregating that for our customers. If we use mobile location data as an example, we work with aggregators of mobile apps. So that's where we found that um, we can move quickly, get some high quality data uh, that we can use. And one example of that is that um, we, we get a sampling. We don't get every mobile device. So we'll get a sampling for data in Australia or in the US or other countries in Europe and Asia. And from there, our uh, data science team, for example, has created an algorithm to normalize that data. So be able to make a little bit easier, make it a little bit easier for end users to use. And, and what will that typically show? Is that going to show things like, you know, where there might be bottlenecks in distribution? Is it going to show things like where distribution is at the current point? Give us a snapshot of where things are at that point in time, or what sorts of data would might we expect to see out of that? So uh, one, one example is looking at um, trends. That, that's a big use case. So wanting to understand uh, post-COVID, for example, what are the trends? Is there an increase in activity, a decrease in activity, or is this staying stable? So you can get a sense uh, as one example of production. And uh, we're, we're applying it to auto production. We're applying it to mining as, uh, you know, as a, a, we're looking here in Australia, Port Headland, other areas. Um, that, that's one of the values um, the, of, of the geospatial data is that you can look globally and no one has uh, exclusive rights to geospatial commercially available data so you can look at those trends we're applying it here in retail in australia we have a partner location iq sydney-based leading real estate and uh, retail analytics commercial real estate and retail analytics company they have clients like woolworths and and others and so they're tracking over 1,000 malls um, within Australia, looking by, uh, you know, New South Wales or wherever it be, and looking at the activity. So you can get tremendous insights. And even if you wanted to look at consumer behavior, when uh, a consumer visits, um, for example, a, you know, IKEA anchored mall, what is their behavior? How, what, what does that look like? You can get some tremendous insights from the data. Are you able to give us some examples of, of the types of insights that you're able to pull from that data using, say, the IKEA mall for, as an example? One specific question would be, how does an IKEA-anchored mall perform versus a non-IKEA-anchored mall? That would be a more uh, surface-level um, conversation, uh, a, a point of analysis. And then from there, where are they... Uh, where are shoppers at IKEA going to before or after uh, visiting IKEA? Those, those would be a simple, that would be a simple way to analyze. Another example would be if you look at theme parks, that's uh, one area that our data is being used. So when uh, travelers come into Sydney airport, what hotels do they generally stay at? What are the top tourist destinations? What are the theme parks? and getting a sense of who are these people coming in, in an aggregate, where we're looking at aggregate activity and to better improve, um, for example, marketing or tourism activities. How is it that you're able to determine from the number of people landing in Sydney, which hotels they might be staying at or whatever? Because it would be easy to perhaps incorrectly draw the conclusion that you're able to literally track people from the airport to the hotel and say, well, we know that this many people are going from here to here. Is it literally that, that, or is it something a little more algorithm based? Yeah, so we get uh, aggregated and anonymous mobile location data. So that's what we receive into our platform. And what we have is a traceability algorithm. And that's okay. the algorithm we use, use to see how our place is connected. So, for example, it's the same algorithm we use for Unilever to connect the supply chain. We run the traceability algorithm, show you how the supply chain is connected. And that's the same algorithm we'll use at an airport to understand where, what are the top destinations 
after Sydney Airport for tourists or hotels, for example. So it's more a case of we're tracking, for example, I'm making this up, uh, we're tracking IMIE numbers rather than individual people. Uh, correct. It's not at the individual level. It's, uh, again, on anonymous, aggregated mobile location yep. data. Yep. As, a, okay. as a commercial company, we're, we're, we're concerned about economic activity. And that's what our clients are concerned. And so that's actually really interesting because that allows us from a a security point of view to be able to determine all sorts of things like whereabouts within a facility people might be moving around, say, at a large sporting event or a large event like the Olympics, for example, or a World Cup. Um, Even from, I imagine, a safe cities perspective for someone like Melbourne City Council or Brisbane City Council, to be able to track where a, a large movement patterns happening within groups and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Yes, the large sporting events is a topic that comes up and uh, it's not real time, but we say it's near real time and there is a lag in the data. So um, it, it wouldn't be something you'd use live at a sporting event, but if someone wanted to have economic insight a day later, after a sporting event, for example. So I wanted to analyze yesterday's sporting event. During the course of our conversation right here, I could create a project within a few minutes. I'd hit run within 15 to 20 minutes. John, you and I would be reviewing the analysis together. That's quite powerful. It wouldn't be for a live event, it'd be for yesterday's event. And then if we sort of move up to the next level above the the commercial applications and we start getting into more local, state and federal government type applications, what sorts of projects are you undertaking in those areas that uh, that help us understand a bit more about what you're doing? Some key area, a few of the key areas we're working in our financial firms is is a in terms of number of clients we have the most financial firms uh, using our our software and then energy and commodities mining that's another area that we have activity and a key sweet spot for us as well is really defense and intelligence governments and defense and intelligence and uh, some examples uh, would be one is automating military assets of military assets, uh, automating analysis of military assets. So one example is over a hundred airfields around the world. Uh, we've just automated plane detection and classifying them by fighter, bomber, commercial aircraft. And so there's quite a lot of value in that data because governments have been doing doing that by by uh, human analysts counting. But really, in terms of counting, computers and algorithms are better at counting, and that's a better use of time. We our, our thesis is that the, the human analysts should be doing smarter human intelligence uh, that only humans can do at this point. Uh, so that'd be one, asset. Uh, one example would be military asset Uh, based analytics. Another would be activity-based. So we saw a tremendous amount of interest with Russia, Ukraine. And when an activity happens or is about to happen, to be able to get quick geospatial insights and understanding. So coming back to some of the sorts of things that you were tracking before and being able to track things like um, mobile assets and stuff like that, I'm assuming this is a slightly different piece of the, the puzzle here because we're looking at assets on the ground and and marking where they are or aren't. So in CCTV, we have the ability to track things like objects left or objects found. Is that kind of similar to what we're talking about here where a day ago we might have been looking at a plot of an area where there was nothing and now all of a sudden we're starting to see that there's activity in that area that wasn't there yesterday? Help me understand how that works. Exactly, as you said, we have satellite imagery coverage of the whole world. And, uh, you know, as more satellites go into space, the, the cost of launches come down, more satellites go in, go, go up. Uh, the cost of commercial satellite imagery is getting more and more accessible. So we'll have more and more observations. And uh, as one example, uh, is, as you said, is change detection. So customers, you know, governments want to know when there's a change 
somewhere. So rather than traditionally a, a government analyst had to just monitor, you know, quite that painful um, uh, wrote the painful activity of just having to look at imagery every day to see if there's any change. Now algorithms can do that and tell you, well, a plane arrived that wasn't there before, a submarine arrived that wasn't there before. Uh, so exactly, as you said, change detection is a key component of it. And I imagine buildups in particular areas, right. and that doesn't necessarily have to be troop movements and buildups, it might be, okay, we're seeing an increase in fishing in this particular area of, of an ocean, or it might be, we're seeing an increase in traffic in this particular part of a, an area or whatever it may be. Is that the case? Exactly. We have a, so we have AI computer vision algorithms. So just like, uh, Google or Facebook have imagery, um, uh, image recognition capabilities, facial recognition capabilities, uh, computer, same type of computer vision to recognize what does a car look like from satellite imagery, a truck, um, air different classes of airplanes, different classes of ships. What does a cruise ship look like versus an aircraft carrier? We have these various classes and then we just quantify that from the satellite imagery and you pick your key areas where this can be deployed to. Um, I can give some examples publicly, uh, China, North Korea, they're, they're key um, areas as you might imagine where customers are looking uh, with Russia, Ukraine, even to the buildup to Russia and Ukraine, there was a lot of interest in understanding uh, that act, having activity-based uh, intelligence for Russia, Ukraine, um, Chinese ports come up as well as, as a topic. And one example I can give is recently we did a, a collaboration with Stanford University on in-depth analysis of North Korea to understand a little bit more about uranium uh, enrichment. I, I'd add also very relevant for Australia, I believe, are two topics, maritime. So we are doing analysis of South China Sea. We are doing maritime analysis around the world, and as well as supply chain security, understanding where, how connected are your companies to other companies around the world? Uh, those are all applicable solutions. As part of that, do you offer any sort of open source uh, intelligence as far as things like, let's say I'm the um, security manager for a petroleum and natural gas mining company, and we're looking at putting staff into a, a potentially new site over in, I'll use Ache as an example. Can I connect with your company and get open source intelligence around, well, look, we're seeing troop movements on the border of Arche increasing. Um, we're seeing rebel groups moving in and around this area. Maybe now is not the time that you want to be putting assets into that area, or is that the kind of thing that you offer? Our, our data is commercial data. So it's commercially available. It's open to the public and it's available with subscription. So anywhere that uh, a um, car detection Action or plane or mobile device activity or vehicle, connected vehicle type of activity is a helpful signal for understanding activity. We're able to provide those types of insights. Um, so those would be some example areas where we could deliver some value. If people wanted to find out more about what you do, where do they go? You can go to our website, www.orbitalinsight.com and reach out to us uh, there. And uh, we have teams in different geographies and um, um, I cover Asia Pacific. So we'd like to, and we're planning on spending a lot more time um, as of this year in Sydney um, and, and around Australia, Melbourne, Canberra. So feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to have a discussion with you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, John.